When you start a new craft, or even if you've been in a craft for a while, you start to realize over time that you may have had some misconceptions when you started. Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com, and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty supplies and time. So today I want to share five lies about card making. This is supposed to be kind of just like a fun, more of tongue-in-cheek kind of video. Like, I'm not trying to be overly negative with this, but there are some things that when you get started, you can kind of fall into a trap of thinking they're true, and then over time you realize not so much. I think the first lie that a lot of us get for card making is that making your own cards will be cheaper than buying cards. And we pretty much all know after maybe a month of card making that that's probably not true. I think it can be. I think you can absolutely make cards that average out to about 50 cents, a dollar a piece, and it would be cheaper than making cards. This set of cards that I did make a video on recently, I made 12 cards. I used like two sheets of pattern paper, a couple sheets of cardstock, and a sticker pack. So I don't think if I, I added up the supplies that I used across all 12 cards, I think I did use a stamp set on one, but for the most part I got away without that. I could have done the card without the stamp set, but if I just did the like pattern paper stickers and stuff, it would have averaged to less than a dollar a card. It is possible is what I'm trying to say. But most of us don't want to do that. We want to buy the fancy coloring mediums. A lot of these cards I show will use Copics. I bought coordinating dies. I bought uh, like a die that cut all this interesting at the edge uh, stuff at the edges. Even a stamp set. Like you can use it across many many cards, and that makes it more expensive. There are totally ways that you can save money card making. That you can make things inexpensive. For instance, this cool texture I created here at the bottom is literally just sandpaper. I could pick that up at the dollar store instead of buying blue paper, I was able to use my inks and I could, you could use your inks to make colored cardstock so you don't have to purchase as much. Um, you know, this has a background die. That background die is good forever. You can use it many, many times and even possibly resell it. Like I totally understand that there are ways to make card making more inexpensive, but most of us in the end are not doing it because it's cheaper. I mean, imagine if you bought a pack of Christmas cards versus made these four cards. I mean, you could buy a pack of Christmas cards for a buck. The next lie, kind of related to what I had just said, is that you need all the things and that it has to be expensive. I kind of explained how it doesn't have to be expensive already, but also just this idea that you need all the things. I think to like some extent it's almost like become popular to um, buy and show off all of your stuff because I mean hey this looks pretty especially when you, you rearrange it in rainbow order you take a picture it looks cute on Instagram right and I do I mean I have the full set of lawn fawn tiny ink so we all can fall prey to it but I also in purchasing these decided not to buy any other inks despite the gorgeous inks that are out there and so in general I am trying to in terms of not falling prey to that idea that we need all the things is pick one coloring medium that's my favorite. I've tried a lot. I like Copics the best. I only have a few different kinds of ink and they're all different. So I have Distress Inks, Distress Oxides, and Lawn Fawn. And they're all a little bit different. Um, stamps. Not having to have every stamp from your favorite creator. And I've been guilty of that in the past where I'm like, I just really love their art. But then I realize I don't actually use them all. So realizing over time that you don't have to have the newest thing, you see a new pretty flower set. Well, do you have something similar in your stash? You see a cute new stamp set with pigs and oh, your best friend loves pigs, but wait, you have three stamp sets already with pigs in it or things like that. I'd say the next misconception is that it takes a long time to make a card. I don't think that has to be true. I showed you this card before. This is Copic coloring. This did take me hours to do. And some people are faster than others. But when I make a pattern paper card and I use the coordinating embellishments, this is a Spellbinders kit. And I have a video on these. And you'll see in the video that like I am following my paper busting templates. So if you're new to my channel, I make these paper busting templates that tell you how to cut a particular piece of paper to sizes and then put them on a card with a sketch and some mats and you don't make any pattern paper scraps and it allows you to make cards really really quickly so these were with some of the different sketches I have. 
I have them for six by six paper, six by eight, 12 by 12, eight and a half by 11, all kinds of paper sizes and all kinds of card, card sizes. I love A2 size cards, but I also make them for five by seven, slimline, etc. So when you follow a sketch, that can really make the process shorter. You can keep a much simpler card. Like once I did finish this Copic coloring, and that's what I enjoyed doing, I then kept the rest of the card really simple. I used some pattern paper in the background, for instance. And I think that card making can take as little or as much time as you want it to take. If you enjoy spending hours and hours, you know, with all the techniques, great, please, of course, do it. And as you can see, I like doing both and that's fine too. But I just think that that's a, sometimes people think, oh my gosh, anything with crafting has to take a long time. And I don't think that's true. Lie number four related to that is that pattern paper is cheating. I've seen this said a couple of times. I'm not saying everyone believes this, but I've seen it hinted at in a couple of times in Facebook groups and comments and things like that. I mean, I obviously disagree. I use pattern paper all the time. Do I feel like I'm cheating? What does that even mean, cheating? Can you cheat in card making? Like maybe, again, you love that detailed Copic coloring. Go for it. Maybe your friend who you're sending your card to is going to appreciate these two cards just as much because they don't even know what it took to, you know, design a car like that. I'm so, gonna say it's, I don't think pattern paper is cheating. I use pattern paper on this card. And so even though it did take all of that time, it still helped enhance this card and bring it out. And so I don't think that you always have to make your own background. And of course, again, like, you know, you start with this base of these templates and these are available at justcrafts.com. There's gonna be links in the video description. So if you're curious, you can check out some more videos on the channel, but you still get to make a lot of decisions. Here, I used pre-made embellishments. You know, they came with the kit, but I could have easily colored my own stamp to go with this. I could have, this had a foiled sentiment. Now I could have stamped and foiled a sentiment with a hot laminator machine thing. I don't have one of those. I don't want to invest in one of those. That's expensive, that's time consuming, etc. Does your is your card better because you did the hot foiling yourself and I bought the foiled sentiment? I don't think so, but I'm also not knocking you for enjoying the foiling process. So I, that's for me a misconception. The last misconception lie they tell you is that you have to label and organize and make pretty all the things. That can be fun. Please do that if it makes your heart happy. Please, if that makes you craft more because you can find your stuff, go for it. You know, I have some swatches. Do I use them all that often? Not really because, like particularly with my lawn fawn inks, this is not true of every ink, but if I look at my stamp of plastic flamingo and then I look at what is printed on there, they're pretty close. So I don't really need to use my swatch book that often, but you can do it. Um, these swatches, the, the download that I got for them is from Jennifer McGuire, so I will link that, but you don't have to swatch, label, reorganize, making pretty baskets, etc. For example, um, I got this new scrapbook.com die set. I literally cut the top, top off the packaging so that I didn't have to keep peeling this off on the back. I don't like getting them out that way. I like just being able to slip them out. And that's it. I could put magnets behind them. Maybe I'll rearrange it in the future, but right now I can access everything really easily. It fits in my die storage. It's labeled. I know how many pieces are in it. I know who it's from. All of those good things. Sometimes on the back, there's even like a picture. So I don't like getting rid of this backer sheet. Um, the Sunny Studio stamp set. A lot of times I'll see people repackage them into stamp pockets. And again, like if that makes your heart happy, if that makes you enjoy your craft space, great. But you can slip it in this storage bag or you could cut the top off. Eventually I do find the packaging, the original packaging does tend to rip if you use a stamp set a lot. But for a long time, you know, cut the top off. Then you don't have to label it, it's Sunny Studio, you know that. But even beyond that, it actually has the label right there on the stamp set. So even if I were to ditch this, I don't, I'm, I still know it's Silly Sloths from Sunny Studio. I even know that it was probably made in 2019. 
There's a, a lot of uh, stamps have that right there on the packaging, so we don't need to go get out the label maker and make a new label, et cetera, et cetera. Well, this so. video has been kind of fun, giving you some food for thought, something to connect with. Please share any other misconceptions that you have found over the years, things were like, you know, you thought that at first when you started card making and maybe not so much anymore or different tips and tricks you've had related to all this stuff. I just love chatting with you guys and kind of just seeing what we all bring to the table. If you if found this video helpful, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. If you like this video, share with your crafty community, subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial, and check the video description for product links as well as links to different resources and videos mentioned in today's video. See you next time!